sorry. I didn't see you there. I'm Steve, and I was just reading George Michael's famous book on watchmaking, and I had some aha moments. Anyway, good day and welcome to Watch Me, a C Quartz watch company watch blog. Today is going to be our very first episode where we go over some Vietnam era watches. We're also titling this episode, Charlie Don't Surf, after the famous film Apocalypse Now. Here at Watch Me, we like to do a daily wrist check. Today I have a watch that's apropos to the topic. It is an homage watch to the old Ben Russ Type 2 Navigator's watch. Some of the best feature of these watches is that they have an asymmetric case, which means that the case is not even on both sides. They also have, this one has a 12 hour bezel, that way you can keep track of two time zones. It has military time inside with the 24 hours and also 12 hours on the inside of the dial. I like this one because again, in keeping with the topic of the show, it has a very cool relief. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's from the film Apocalypse Now. Uh, it's got the, the helicopters coming in um, when they're playing Ride right of the Valkyrie, which is a pretty cool song by uh, Richard Wagner. We might be able to make a link to that in the description. We do have a link to a Watch You Seek article about this, or a sales post rather, um, that has all of the data that you'll need on this one. It measures about 42 in terms of the case width. It's about 47 lug height, and it's got a 20 millimeter lug width. It fits very nice. Some people think it's a little bit too small. I like wearing it on this military green NATO strap, which fits right through here. This is exactly what these, these watches were originally issued on. Inside of this particular model, the movement that beats inside is a Miyota 90-15 movement. Now a movement is the mechanical machine that makes these watches work. These watches in fact don't need a battery. They're not electric at all. Inside, they have a rotor that goes around and supplies power to a spring. That spring then drives the second hand and drives the whole power of the watch. That's the whole idea between an automatic watch. Many watches we have today are quartz or they're electric powered like the iWatch. But these older watches issued back in the late 60s and 70s, they didn't have that technology until the quartz crisis. Some other info on this watch is that it has pierced lugs, which means that these lugs have holes drilled into them, which makes for much easier strap changes. The crystal on this one is not period specific. This is a sapphire crystal, I believe, and that means that it's much more scratch resistant and break resistant than mineral crystal or what they used to use on these, which was basically acrylic. The Gaz no longer has these watches available on their website. You can still find them on Watch You Seek. You might be able to find some on eBay or in watch forums. I purchased this one directly from another Instagrammer who goes by Watch Squatch. He's a pretty cool guy. If you like seeing great photos with cool military and tool style watches and a guy that wears the probably the best looking flannel I've seen on the internet, give him a follow. He's, he's great to follow. He's a cool guy as well. But that's where I got this. The last one I saw for sale was about $450 online. I think it's more than worth it. I, I got a pretty good deal on this one. I've enjoyed it. The loom is great. There's not much else to say about this one. You can check the description of the show down below and it will have some links that you can follow. You can learn more about the specs. You can get to DeGaz's website. One thing now is you have to log in to be able to check their stuff out, but they do have other versions of this, just not this one in particular. Next, we have our weekly review. I'll put this away for now. You can continue looking at this beautiful watch. But the next watch that we have up is the Carl's Krona Hemlig Limited Edition. I bought this watch again on, uh, through an Instagram seller. He does have a website. We'll link that website inside of the description. He's a small manufacturer and he makes pretty good pieces. I've enjoyed this one quite a bit. It comes on this NATO strap that he does. Uh, the NATO strap is blasted. Again, the case is blasted just like the last one. You may be saying, hey, Steve, this looks like a very similar watch, and you'd be right. 
This is the Type 1 dial. So both of these were made. This one was usually made for the navigators that would sit behind a pilot in the cockpit. The other ones were made more for platoon boat drivers. Both of them have this screw down crown, which gives them about 200 meters of water resistance. As you can see, that goes in and out, which is pretty cool. Um, this one is quite a bit longer than the Degas version. This one is about 49 millimeters, and we can check that right here. You can get one of these, which are calipers, right on Amazon. Once we get an Amazon affiliate page, I'll put some of these up there. If you want to support the show and you want a pair of these, you can buy them there at the Amazon affiliate link, and we would really appreciate that. We're a completely independent show, so we buy every single watch that we're going to show you. I'm not going to take anything in for review for free. I want you to get as unbiased an opinion as you can get, which means I'm buying everything, which means I do need a little help with that. And buying things that from an Amazon affiliate link does give me a few cents on the dollar, and it really helps. So as you can see, we'll open these calipers up. I want to look at the, the lug height. I am not great at this. And this one is almost, yeah, it's 49.72. So we got a pretty long boy here. So we've got a pretty long lug height. That is the distance between the tip to tip of the lug here. Here we have over 49 millimeters. That's a good size. To me, that's a great size for a tool watch that you don't want to wear under a long sleeve shirt or anything like that. This one, the case width, is again, almost the exact same size as the gas we looked at earlier. It's 42.5. And I'll put this on my wrist so you can see what it looks like on. This one has a really great wrist presence, I think. I think that looks great. It covers the wrist. To me, the, the NATO strap here, it's a double pass NATO strap. It makes the watch sit up quite a bit on the wrist. I usually like to go with single pass NATO straps, but this is a very nice one that he issues it on. Inside of here beats a Solita SEL movement. That's another high beat movement, which means that it beats much faster than a regular movement. So you get a much cleaner sweep of the second hand. The other really nice thing about these is they're hand regulated. This one's been keeping within about two seconds a day since I've been wearing it. He has these, I think, still on his website available. I'll link that also. Again, completely independent. Um, I bought this one on my own, whatever discounts were available on coupons. I didn't, I didn't get anything in remuneration for this. I just, I just think it's a super cool watch. And you can get these for under $400. I don't understand why he still has some left. The only thing some people have had an issue with is this and has a, a ghost logo on it, on the dial. Some people don't like that. I think it's really cool. It's a trident. He also has a signed crown. It's a trident. Overall, I think it's a great watch. I don't have a scale, but in terms of would I buy this or not, the answer is I bought it and I've kept it. I've had this for quite a while. haven't resold it. Um, this watch is going to stay in my collection until gosh knows when. I'm, I'm just going to keep it. It's, it's a forever watch for me. So that's, I, let's, let's say I have a scale of, of one to five, one being I got it in, I wanted to flip it as soon as possible, I hate it. Two being, uh, it's okay, I'm gonna wear it for a week or two and I'm gonna flip it after that. Three being, this is awesome, I'm gonna keep it for a few months and we'll see where it goes. If I can get most of my money back out of it, I'm gonna go ahead and sell it. Four being, I'm gonna keep this for the time being. If someone makes me a really good deal on it, I may sell it or as part of a trade. And five being, I'm just gonna keep this watch. This one's a five, an absolute five. Our next segment here is a watch and learn segment on Watch Me. We're gonna use the same watch here, this Carl's Krona Hemlick, to go over parts of a watch. We've gone over other parts of this watch during this episode, but I wanted to go into them more specifically so you have an idea of what we're talking about every single episode. I'm gonna take off this strap so that you can see the workings of the watch. So first of all, the whole outside of the watch is known as the case. There's several parts of the case. There's the case back, there's the mid case, which is the part in between the case back and the bezel. There's the bezel, which is this part that moves. And then inside of this bezel sits a bezel insert. What we usually do is we use an adhesive to get this bezel insert to house inside of this bezel, okay? The other part of the watch is the pins. The pins are the things that hold the straps in. They're right here. 
Most watches, you can remove these pins, change them out, use them to remove them. You could add a leather strap if you like. Many watches come on a metal strap. You could actually take that off and switch out the strap. I think a lot of consumers don't know that that are new to watches. So if you see a watch you love and it has a strap that you don't love, feel free to buy that watch. You can simply change out the strap. Now the thing that holds these pins in are called lugs. The lugs are the part of the watch that protrudes out from the case. Here, these are these lugs. The most common size of these lugs is 22 millimeters, 20, 21 millimeters, 22 millimeters, and sometimes you get a big thick lug width and that's 24 millimeters. The other way we measure the watch, as I've talked about earlier, is lug height. That is the lug to lug distance. Now watches come in all kinds of lug heights, but the most common is 46, and you don't see too much stuff over 51. So there's really not too much variance unless you start getting into mall watches, which sometimes can be monstrous, or if you get into old time vintage watches, sometimes they're quite a bit smaller. And finally, uh, as we talked about case back, there's the strap. The strap is what holds the watch to your wrist. With something like this, we could take these out and put leather in there. One thing I like to do though, and I'm gonna wipe this watch. One thing I like to do with this watch is I like single pass NATO straps. Now they can't be sold in the U.S. as NATOs because nowadays in the U.S. there's a gentleman that has a trademark on it. So commercially we can't use that name. Oftentimes they'll just call them fabric straps, pass-through straps, all these types of names. Uh, but originally they're called NATO straps because they were issued on watches through NATO. And so the idea was these are NATO issue watch straps that had a NATO reference number and, and that kind of thing. And what you can do with a NATO strap, you just simply push it right through. You pull it to the top here. You push it right through. These are the easiest straps to change of all. You can easily get lots of colors and color coordinate your watch every single day with your outfit if you'd like to. Many people do. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on my wrist again. So I hope you learned a lot from our watch and learn. You can also write some kind of comments for me if you have other questions. I know this may seem very simple for some people uh, that have been watch fans for a long time, but a lot of people don't know this stuff. All right, and our final segment here on Watch Me is gonna be our Casio and or Chinese watch of the day. A lot of people do like high horology. They like spending big prices on expensive watches. And that's a great part of the hobby. It's, it's something that you can build towards as a hobbyist. But for me, I like getting something maybe every month. I do enjoy treating myself. That's, that's probably one of my favorite parts of this hobby is, is hunting down good bargains. One of the best bargains in the business that you can get is a Casio. They have incredible specs. They're well designed. You can return them if something's wrong with them. And they're just a whole lot of fun. Uh, the same goes for a lot of these Chinese watches that are coming out now. In the past, the quality control on them wasn't so good. The quality control is getting better. You will, if you buy them directly from China, about mm, three out of 10 will have some problems. You may have to return it. What I found is the best way to get a Chinese watch is to buy it used from another big fan of watches that may have an Instagram page, or you could maybe join some Facebook groups and trade within there. A lot of people will have their watch on a scale again, that one to five scale. A lot of people just want to get the watch, enjoy it for a minute, and flip it. You can always buy one for cheap off of someone that does that. So let's go over this Casio. This is the 40th anniversary Square G-Shock. These came out originally in 1983. The call number on this is Casio DW5040PG1. The, the 5040 cases or the 5000 cases are always these squares. They're great cases. This has 200 meters of water resistance. This has none of the bells and whistles of the modern ones. All it has is the countdown timer. It has the stopwatch. It has the alarms. It has, I don't think this one even has two time zones. It keeps the date for you. And it has really good luminescence. Let me see if you can't see that. We're not in the dark. It has gold ionized plating on it and has some DLC plating. There's a screw down case back. These are made in Japan. It's got the bio resin. It's super soft and it's got great badging. This one says Project Team Tough on it, which was the original project team that made these watches. I'm gonna go ahead and rank this one a five on my scale. Uh, you know my scale. This one's staying in the collection pretty much forever. It's probably a 4.5. If someone gave me the right price at some point in the future, I might be willing to sell it, but this one's probably gonna stay. I could go ahead and give you the dimensions on this thing. 
the lug height, as we talked about, is right at 49 millimeters. Uh, this one's 48.9. The case width on this guy is about 42.8, which is a great case width. It has downturn lugs, so it wears very comfortably. Again, it's got this integrated bracelet. On these, we talked earlier that you can often take these off. These are hard to take off. You're gonna need to get a screwdriver. They do have connectors. We can do that in a watch and learn in the future. The thickness of this guy, which is something we didn't go over earlier, is about 14 millimeters, it's 13.8, pretty thick, uh, but not for this type of watch. This dude is pretty light, um, it's 78 grams, it's still pretty heavy, it's made of stainless steel, and again, this is actual gold, it's ionized gold plate. Like all G-Shocks, this one is shock resistant, as the name would imply, which means you can bang it around, trash it, do whatever you like, probably run over it in a car, not going to have too much wrong with it. And they say that this thing is recrystallized. I have no idea what that means, but I think it has something to do with the way the screen is. It's got that old vintage feel to the screen. I love it, 1980s style. These things aren't available on Amazon. You're either gonna have to get them through Casio. They also have authorized dealers that you can get them from. I got mine in the, the mall here in Pittsburgh at a place called Noah Gabriel. The GM there is a good guy. His name is Chad. Tell him I sent you. Again, I don't get any special deals. I just, I just like him, and I wanted to pass on a name to you guys. He's great. I buy stuff there. I do reviews on Google for him. So, Well, that concludes the first show of Watch Me. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave, your, leave all kinds of comments for me, anything you'd like to see reviewed, particularly Chinese watches. Uh, like, follow, subscribe. Follow me, you idiots.